Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this afternoon, we are going to be looking at the whole matter of crime and violence in Jamaica and the fact that crime and violence, you know, are tied to, uh, you know, these political and entertainment connections, right? That there is a nexus between crime and violence, the entertainment world, and also our politicians. Because, you know, we are having and seeing some strange occurrences in our society in recent times, particularly uh, since the release of Vibes Cartel. Now, Vibes Cartel, as for those of you who don't know, is a Jamaican pop music icon. And he is world renowned and someone who has been, you know, traveling the world, who has traveled the world and who has gained not notoriety around the world. And he has produced influential music, music that people all around the world love. Not sure if that the music is uplifting, if it is a music that is going to inspire people to come together and to live peacefully as a people. But he claims that he is this great lyricist, lyricist rather, and that people are have to listen to him. They are compelled to listen to him because of his great lyrics. Now, when we look at the the whole condition of what is happening in Jamaica, I've been saying for a long time that our society is a criminal one. That criminality is what runs the show, and that provides a lot of the wealth and the sustenance in our society. And it is very difficult for us to grasp that concept because of how the society has indoctrinated us into believing that wealth is created through the organization of, you know, these big corporations and investments. And we don't understand that the whole banking industry and the world of finance often is tied to organized crime. And it's something very difficult for us to understand, not only in Jamaica, but around the world, including in the United States of America. And if you don't believe me, you can get a copy of Brittany Webb's book, right? Brittany Webb's book, and she's an investigative American journalist um, in which she speaks about the whole matter of crime and violence, organized crime, and its nexus to Wall Street and the American financial infrastructure. The book, the title of the book is One Nation Under Blackmail, right? So the title of that book, written by Britain Webb, I think she has it in two tones, right? Two volumes, One Nation Under Blackmail by Britain Webb. Go and read that book and you'll see how the financial world, much of what we consider to be wealth and opulence, right, is tied to organized Crime. And the higher you get and the more you study the financial infrastructure and the financial system is the more you realize a lot of people have to be um, enslaved. A lot of people have to be killed. Right. They have to go. They have to be trafficked. Right. And that's why we have sexual trafficking. We have human trafficking and all of these traffickings, which are, of course, um, a parallel to modern day slavery, because that's what was that was what slavery was all about, the trafficking of human bodies. And that industry has not stopped. It has morphed into a different reality where we it is now sexual trafficking or trafficking of organs and stuff like that. Now, Vibes Cartel is, you know, said to be free now. Well, he's free. And the fact is that people are claiming that he is innocent. Well, we do not know whether or not Vibes Cartel is innocent or he is guilty, right? That is not for us to determine, and the courts did not determine that. Having said that, however, I do also believe that he might be guilty, right? As well as he might be innocent. The fact, if, if he is guilty, then why are we going around? Because we do not know, you know, which side he um, is actually on, why are we embracing him in the way we are embracing him and giving him that sort of media attention and allowing our young people to think that if he's guilty, crime pays. It pays to kill. It pays to murder. That is the impression I'm getting because if he is not, if he's guilty, 
then it seems to me that we are actually, you know, um, coronating, as it were, crime and violence. What do you think? You think that it is appropriate to be having, you know, Vibes Cartel, you know, getting that airtime that he's getting from our media um, and having him voice his whole story while we have the voices of people who need their voices to be heard in the media having it snuffed out, poor people. Vibes Carter is not poor. He might have come from a poor background, but he's no longer poor. He has not been poor for many years. In fact, I'm understanding that he has catalog or he has a catalog, a catalog produced from 2000, the music that he has been pro producing from 2000, that is able to keep him alive throughout his life, that he doesn't even have to produce one more music. He has enough music on his catalog to keep him surviving until he dies and perhaps beyond. I was looking at a figure the other day and I think he stands over $115 million in, in wealth. That's his value, right? So Vibes Cartel is quite a wealthy person, a wealthy Jamaican person. He does not have to be seen in the public and don't tell me because he's an entertainer. That, that, that does not mean anything. Is he a god, right? And if even if he were a politician, even if he were a lawyer or a doctor or a teacher or a nurse, he should not, if these allegations have not yet been cleared up, he should not be seen in the public's eye in which we are actually putting him in, right? We are giving him this large plat platform to air his grouses and to also display his narcissistic qualities because Vibes Cartel is narcissistic and we need to come to grips with that and perhaps he needs some help he needs some spiritual psychological psychiatric help and not to be given a platform where he's talking to normal people and we are normalizing that sort of criminal behavior because even if he has not committed the crime, Vibes Carter has this criminal aura. He has this gangster disposition that is not good for us to be displaying in the, in the public's view, right? We should not be displaying that sort of, you know, aura, that sort of disposition in the public's eye. Why have we degraded ourselves to that level? Now, when we see Vibes Cartel, for example, wearing this bandana, the handkerchief over his face, and he is a so-called role model for our younger generation of men and women. Now, when the school, terms be the school term begins, which is shall begin in shortly, and you see these guys wearing the same thing because it's a trend, according to Vibes Cartel. It came from his own mouth that the bandana over his face is a trend. It is a style that is here to stay. Now, when you have these young men in school, because they're going to be following him, they're going to be mimicking, imitating his behavior. How are the principals going to control that sort of dress? Right? And when the students are on the streets and they're going home to their parents looking like that, looking like gangsters. Hmm? Now, this is a sort of lifestyle that we are promoting in Jamaica, the criminality, the criminal behavior. And then we mourn and we groan when we hear about, you know, massacres as what took place in um, Cherry Lane Gardens, the Cherry Lane Gardens in, 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 in Clarendon. Right, and we 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 behave hypocritically. That yes, we you know crime should be controlled, and that our political leaders are not doing enough. But yet still, we the citizens partake of the criminal behaviors. We the citizens mimic and we glorify, we deify, we idolize these entertainers who have inordinate influence, inordinate influence over our population, over the populace. And they influence our young people, our young minds 
to a great degree. Now, one of the things that I'm looking at as we look at Vives Cartel's um, criminal history, right, and his criminal record, is that we have been focusing, the media have been focusing on Crime Blizzard, but they have, they're not focusing on other crimes that Vives, Vives Cartel, you know, was also alleged to have committed. Right? And we shall look at some of these during my presentation right now, because that is something that is amazing that we're talking about Sting and we're talking about Vibes Carter concert and we're not looking at some of Vibes Carter's previous um, criminal records, records which have not been cleared. And if these records are not cleared, then he will, if he's guilty, he's going to continue on and on without any stop because he can go scot-free. And he has enough money to bribe our jurors, to bribe our lawyers, to bribe our judges to do whatever he pleases. Because that is the society in which we live. He who pays the piper, you know, he's the one who calls the chew. Right? So that is what the society in which we live. And we cannot ignore this sort of reality. Now, let's look at some articles. We have Dives Carter to visit opposition leader in Belize, um, which he has, but I just wanted to look at this um, article that was written sometimes by Radio Jamaica. Let us see if I can pull up the Radio Jamaica article first. Um, finding it very difficult here to pull that article up. It was on Radio Jamaica website. I'm not sure why this has gone off right now. Wow. Yeah. Is it this? It's not here. But let me read this. This is coming from um, another website. But I would like to see if I could pull up the article from Radio Jamaica. So you can, you know, you can actually believe what I'm saying to you because we don't want to be, you know, alleging, making allegations that are unfounded. So I wanted to do Radio Jamaica. Let me just see if I can find that article and vibes, cartels, ties to criminal behavior. Let me just see if I could 